Don't drink it. That's not delicious cherry Kool-Aid. That's acid. And you need to go with the acid flow. Okay, data and D length are our attacker controlled inputs. Data, boom, that catches this pointer on fire. Arrival domain is the attacker controlled data. Arrival domain member count is run through network two host short to come up with a new member count. Attacker controlled 16 bit value saying how many members are in this data structure. Then we got the new member count being passed into this DOM rec length. I'll show you what that is in a second when we look at some more instances of it down here. So for now, just know that that's attacker controlled and that is attacker controlled and that is attacker controlled. All sorts of goodly acid. All right, moving on. Now down here, we've got that arrival domain, which is pointing at the attacker control data and it's passed into DOM rec length. So let's go ahead and see what DOM rec length actually does. So this takes in a domain and it's going to take the address of members. Well, here you go. There's the definition of the tipsy mon domain. Address of members minus the address of the domain itself. So minus essentially the beginning of the domain. So it's essentially counting up the data from the beginning of members back to the beginning of the thing. So essentially two, four, six, eight, and another eight, 16 bytes of stuff here. So, and you know, then plus member account times size of U32, well, the member count is zero there. So essentially this is going to be, is D length less than 16? If so, then clearly you don't even have enough data to store the structure and that would be bad. So good, sanity checks, we like sanity checks. Nothing ruins the attacker's day like sanity checks. Unfortunately, this code has one too few sanity checks. All right, so that's all good. That's basically just checking is D length less than 16? If so, error out. Now we've got another DOM rec lang, and that is the same thing, but this time it has the attacker controlled and new member count passed in. So it would be 16 plus whatever the attacker controlled times U32. It's supposed to be essentially like counting how many members are actually in use where this is a maximum value of 64. So the fact that this is fully attack controlled at this point is a bit of a problem because that could be a number greater than 64. It's supposed to be, you know, at most 64 and, you know, usually, you know, zero, one, two, however many are actually used, but it can significantly exceed 64 and that will lead to problems later. But all it's concerned about for now is that the D-Lang is if that's not equal to exactly, you know, however many members it said, plus the size of the rest of the struct, if it's not exactly equal to the right thing, basically if this D length is not seen when uh, used in conjunction with this uh, controlled member count, then it will error out. So that's good. You should definitely do that. And then one last check, some check for, you know, the new D length, which up here we saw was that same thing. So essentially this right here, it's the same thing as right up there. If the new day do D lang is not equal to the arrival domain of length, so just another attack controlled value, then it'll error out. And if the new D lang is greater than the D lang, then that'll error out. But of course, these are all attack controlled values, which allows them to thread the needle and make sure they don't prematurely return, preventing their capability to reach the vulnerability. All right, moving on. So now what do we have? We've got an animation that's not going. There we go. So consider the first time that you're coming through this code. It's gonna come here, get peer, and it's gonna be passed to mon, and then it'll, you know, check, get a peer. It's gonna keep going down. And at this point, the peer of domain is not actually going to be filled in with anything because we said that that domain entry is like the cache of the first domain record, or sorry, the last domain record that has arrived, but if this is the first domain record, then it can't have anything to cache. So that's not filled in at this point. So DOM is essentially gonna be, you know, uninitialized, null. And so if DOM will not be true, but if not DOM will be true. So we're gonna go ahead and come down to this. It's gonna go ahead and free that, you know, effectively null or uninitialized thing, which is fine and safe. And then it's going to malloc space for a new DOM. Now that was that attacker controlled value that was basically the size of the struct plus the size of the number of entries, U32s time however many times, however many attack controlled values the attacker said there were. So it allocates space for the domain. And then it takes that domain and it assigns to the peer. So peer domain, which is that cache thing, now is going to be filled in with this new allocated thing. 
sanity check quick to make sure that key malloc didn't fail. If it failed, exit out, but let's assume it didn't fail and continue on. All right, that new dling, attacker controlled size, corrupts the new domain that we just allocated and it's gonna set that length to the attacker controlled size. New gen, passing in, that's attacker controlled. New member count, that was again attacker controlled, sets to that, and this is attacker controlled as well. Now at this point, we reach a for loop that looks like it has a acid exit condition. And what's this inside? Oh yes, we also have a manual mem copy from the arriving domain members of I to the new allocated domain members of I. So at this point, your exploit descent should tingle and you should say, well, it looks like I've got an acid exit condition on this loop. And I've got a acid manual copy of attacker controlled values to from a source to a destination. So, you know, is that vulnerable? So that was, of course, one of our common root causes, the caret cause, where we've got asset exit condition and sequential data rights within a loop. But in this particular case, it actually is safe. So the reason it's safe is because the number of members that are being copied from here to there is going to be exactly the right number of members because it allocated based on dlang, and dlang was based on essentially the size of the struct plus the new member count times 32, time, uh, 32 bits or four bytes. So basically you allocated exactly the right amount for this attacker controlled value that was coming in, and so it's just copying from the input one to this newly allocated one without buffer overflowing because it allocated enough. Now. It won't directly overflow, but it's definitely erroneous because we said that new member count was fully attacker controlled and the legitimate members array should have at most 64 of these 32-bit values in it. So clearly something's up here in that we allocated way too big of a thing for way too big of a thing that came in and we copied this acid to that location, but we didn't overflow. So we gotta keep looking for the vulnerability. Okay, so let's, you know, back up for a second and let's come back here. We allocated this, we got the DOM, we assume it didn't error out. The DOM is set into the peer domain and then we go ahead and uh, fill in a bunch of acid values into that DOM. So that's all good and then it's going to loop back around and the next time you get a packet, that DOM was our cached last value. So on the second one that comes in, the first one will be cached in peer domain. So we come back up here and at get peer now from this mon, it's going to pull out the peer that was that previous allocated one. And down here, peer domain is going to be the DOM that just had all of these acid values filled in. And also the fact that it you know exists this time means we're not gonna go hit this because of not DOM. Instead, we're going to hit this because DOM is initialized. So what do we have here? Well, we've got ourselves a mem copy with an attacker controlled length that got set down here on the first time around, attacker controlled data that got set on the first time around, and it is copying it into DOMBEF. So what is DOMBEF? Well, DOMBEF is a fixed size buffer, or sorry, a fixed size structure on the stack. So mem copies should make your splitty sense tingle, especially when you've got attacker controlled lengths and sources. So DOMBEF, it is a tipsy mon domain. That's the domain before. I should call it domain before instead of dombef. It is a tipsy mon domain structure that is allocated on the stack. So you can see it's not a pointer, it's the actual structure and it's actually on the stack. I need to make one very brief comment here and that is the fact that we are copying from the heap to the stack. Turns out that in this class, I use opposite conventions for high addresses high and low addresses low between heap and stack. We'll get into that a whole lot more in the next heap overflow section. But basically we said high addresses are high, low addresses are low for stack. And then if we're looking at heaps in this class, the convention is low addresses high and high addresses low. And this just ends up looking sort of more like what you would tend to see in a debugger. But at the end of the day, you know, students have to be mentally flexible because you're gonna go off and you're gonna look at people's presentations and they're gonna have whatever random convention they came up with and it's never gonna be the same between two different presentations. So at least in this class, you can always expect that I will at least label, you know, what's high, what's low, and you know, stack will behave one way and heap and other things will behave a different way. So what do we have? We have that DOM that got pulled out. 
which was allowed in the first go round to exceed the members of 63. It just, you know, copied from the arrival DOM to the newly allocated DOM. The newly allocated DOM did have enough space because, you know, the member count was just attacker controlled. And so it copied too much data into this domain on the first go round. And now when we pluck it out and we use it as part of a mem copy, it's going to copy too much data into the stack. So it goes up, up, up. And then once it starts going beyond members of 63, as it inevitably will, you start corrupting things on the stack, ultimately leading to an attacker controlled overwrite of the return address on the stack with whatever the members of N is necessary to reach there. So what was the fix for this? Well, you know, you could tell that they were programming paranoid because they had a whole bunch of sanity checks. So that's awesome. You can always tell when someone has a sense of, hey, this stuff is bad, I should really be sanity checking it. Unfortunately, they were just, you know, a little bit off in missing the sanity checks on new member count. So once they added that, it's all good and it's thumbs up from me.